Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about my story since today is the 10th of October which is World Mental Health Day which means I want to spread as much awareness as there is already on the internet so I just thought why not do it today. But we do have a little twist. I'm going to be doing my makeup whilst I talk about my story. This is going to be a challenge for me because I'm very bad at multitasking as it is like I'll go off on a tangent and talk but I feel like because that's it's so I do get quite emotional thinking about my story and talking about my story I don't want to just pick up the camera and do it because it's a hard topic for me to talk about and I don't want to get too emotional so I thought if I'm distracting myself whilst talking about it on camera it'll be much easier I'm doing my brows I don't know if I brought a, ca a camera a mirror yeah I bought a mirror in one of my palettes so Oh, it's so dusty. You know when your makeup gets all over the mirror? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just do my brows with, like, a normal mascara. But I'm, go I'm not going to be talking through what I'm using, just because I do want to focus on telling my story. So, where do I start? I had my first breakdown at the age of 11. Um, this is when I started my new school. Now, I didn't... I wasn't very like confident, I did get bullied in school and it just happened all of a sudden so at 11 I was undiagnosed and I went to a mental health hospital for adolescent, no not adolescent, for children, I went to a children's mental health hospital because I wasn't of adolescent age which is 16 plus. Um, it was very much a roller coaster. I sat there and saw my parents cry and I didn't understand why they were crying because I was having an episode. I was undiagnosed from the age of 11 to the age of 16. At 16, I was diagnosed at a mental health hospital in East London, which was run by the NHS. Um, yeah, I went there and they diagnosed me and they did say like, if Christina was in our hands from the age of 11, we wouldn't have been so quick to put her on medication, we would have tried to diagnose her first. So that's when I got diagnosed at 16. But let's skip to now, me being 24 or 25, I really can't remember, but I am, oh my gosh, I literally just had a moment of amnesia that I was like, am I 26? But anyway, skip to 25, I got diagnosed again because apparently I've been misdiagnosed at 16, so I've been re-diagnosed in my 20s as having schizoaffective disorder. Now, I know it's very bad of me, but I haven't researched my diagnosis, I've just taken my doctor's word for the fact that it's a, a mixture between bipolar and schizophrenia so I do need to look into it and I know I I really should um I, but I do it at my own time like with bipolar I didn't really know much about it until I actually wanted to search into it in my 20s and actually understand myself and be like oh like, I don't want people telling me these are my symptoms I want to know my symptoms so I will do it faster than I did in the past when I had bipolar when I thought I had bipolar I will look into schizoaffective schizo disorder because I I know I was in denial when I um, was diagnosed with bipolar I just didn't want to accept it which is why I just ran away from it and I didn't research it until I was possibly six no not 16 20 maybe 23 maybe 22 so very recently and it's just weird because i feel like just the other day i was educating myself on having bipolar and now i'm educating myself on a whole new diagnosis but yeah it is what it is i actually applaud everyone that um has mental health issues from a young age and uh, feels empowered enough to talk about it whether it be, whether it be on the internet or just advocate in their everyday life or just share your story with people that um you feel comfortable to share it with um unfortunately when i was young i wanted to to um run away from it i did talk about my youtube channel at one point but um i still didn't understand my diagnosis fully so even researching your diagnosis can be a big step um into accepting yourself and what I find drastic and very, what's unempathetic, not empathetic at all, is when people are diagnosed these mental health illnesses but they're turned away from having a mental health team because they just judge their lifestyle. 
and I'm not saying this because I'm assuming, I'm saying this because I've actually heard a story of someone that has the same, well, a diagnosis and they haven't been allocated a team for mental health. They just got sent back to their GP and put on medication. Now, that's not helpful at all and it's just going to be harder for if the person has a breakdown again. So um, I would say if you do have a mental health illness that's been diagnosed and you don't have a team in the community for mental health, just don't accept it. If you need the help, that's not normal. You can get counselling, you can get a peer support worker, you can get referred to these mental health teams and it will be easier for you to get help when you need it in a crisis rather than going for your GP. Because let's be honest, sometimes it's hard to do those things and it's hard to take that step as well. To so just go to A&E is nerve-wracking. Like, I remember... Um, when I had to go to hospital once, I was so nervous, so I had to, like, just, like, you know, well, with me, if I feel that I can't go to hospital because I'm too nervous and it's overwhelming and I need to take that big step, I'm crying, I'm all over the place, oh, I'm missing out on life, I'm going to be in the hospital, I'm going to be locked up for how many weeks? Um, if I catch it whilst I'm actually able to go myself, then it's much easier for me and I calm down once I get to the hospital. I may be manic on the way, but trust me, when I get there, like, I'm ready to go to hospital. And it's a very long way, especially waiting by yourself in A&E. But if you need to do it, just do it. Um, because in the long run, you're better off not, not going through something so hard alone and actually opening up and going to hospital as an informal patient. And then if you're obviously if you go in informal but you have a really bad diag well not bad diagnosis let's not say that if you have a really serious issue and they see that then they will sex you new but let's be real um do you want to be informal and be able to go up while you're not well or sectioned and be in that state and get the help that you need with no without not embarrassing yourself but embarrassing yourself let's be real like i've embarrassed myself so many times um <sighs> what am i even blending <laughs> Yeah, I've embarrassed myself in front of family, maybe even a few messages to my friends that have been off. I've lost friends because of my mental state and I'm not blaming anyone for cutting me off because it is a hard thing to deal with if you don't understand it. And if you're quite young and you don't really know many people that have the same issues, like, I don't expect anyone to run around me and be fake with me if they don't want to be my friend, then so be it. But yeah, like, that's why I spoke about in my last video that having a support system is a very important and I can only just thank my family that instead of them judging me they've actually been there for me. Sorry the reason why I was looking at the camera just then is because I've got my makeup just behind me there and just turn that. Sorry I have to do my eyeliner without talking. Oh I don't even like it. <coughs> Uh, I need the mirror. The dusty mirror. But yeah, like, guys, trust me, it does get better. And I know I say this in most of my videos, but it definitely... Ugh, that is ugly. That eyeliner is ugly. But yeah, it does get better. And let's be real. Um, Not everybody's perfect. And not everybody has the ability to do things that we all can do. Like some people are disabled, some people have mental health issues, some people have physical health issues. Like, we don't judge, we shouldn't judge. And God made us to love ourselves. He made us in his image and God loves us, so we should love ourselves, is all I'm going to say. And, yeah, we definitely shouldn't judge people for having mental health issues. Because, let's be real, like, um, like, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Like, I remember being so scared in school to say why I was off school. Because I did get diagnosed when I was 11. I had many breakdowns during school almost every year. And people would be like, why is Christina not at school? But 
all I could say to them was don't worry about where I was and I'd get questioned and questioned. Uh, now that I speak about it openly, there are some people that feel that they can take the piss, but I don't let them. I really don't, and I, I honestly don't care, because the amount of people that go through it, um, why should I be embarrassed or ashamed of who I am and what I go through on an everyday basis? And if I can um, talk about it... What do I do next? If I can talk about it to make someone feel comfortable in their own skin, then, like, of course I'm going to do that, you know? Sorry, I'm just going to lip gloss. Yeah, this lip gloss is amazing. It's from MUA. I've been shopping with MUA, Makeup Academy MUA. Let me show you. Is it going to focus? Yeah. I've been shopping with them since I was doing my tutorials from young on this channel. So when I saw their um, lip, their lip glosses had flavor flavorings in them, like this one tastes like watermelon sorbet. Had to get them two pounds each. Super drug, come on, brat brat. But anyway, <laughs> thank you for listening to this video. If you found this interesting and like you want to subscribe, please do. It's free. Like this video and comment, and I will see you soon. Bye.